Hi, I'm Matthew Temple. I made a video earlier today about some of my thoughts about the Mandela Effect, and I'll link to that video below because this video sort of extends and piggybacks on one of the things that I said in there, um, which was that I was thinking about how basically as I look at videos of people talking about this effect, um, I feel like typically people have kind of a one week spook period where they're spooked out about it. And then um, and then after that, people tend, in, in just in a rough estimation, in my rough estimation, tend to divide themselves into three groups, which are people who are spooked by it. And those are the kind of second largest group. And then they're the largest group who are the people who are um, interested, fascinated, and maybe weirded out by it, but not in a spooked way, but just in a fascinated way. And then there's the smallest group, it seems to me. Um, but who am I? But anyway, it seems like there are a handful of people who are just totally inspired by it. Um, and, uh, and I happen to be one of those people. It did spook me out for the first week. Um, but then the more I learned about it, and the more I learn about it, the less spooked I get. And the more I theorize about what could possibly be causing it, the less spooky it seems <laughs> to me. And I have a, um, a blog post, which I'll link to below, which goes through my various theories. And, ex and it's inherent in those kind of explanations of my theories, why I'm not spooked um, and why I'm inspired. But, um, and I have, you know, I think, I think in a lot of ways, I think in, um, frou-frou, spiritual, esoteric ways, and I think in uh, logical, hard ways. Um, I used to work as a programmer, and so, you know, in a way I'm, I think, like a scientist, and I understand, um, but I don't always think that way, but I understand that, um, that some people have a need to think in more scientific ways, and uh, and I want to present the one thing I can think of, which is, I think, a solid, non-controversial, incontrovertible, factual reason to believe that this effect is not spooky, or should not most properly be thought of as spooky, or just interesting but actually um, that there's at least one, I can only think of one, but that there's one reason to think of this as an indicator that this is really inspiring, that this is an indication that we are living, that we have been moved to probably, um, or somehow blended with um, a higher dimension, that in a higher dimension, I don't even know what that means, you know, a dimension that vibrates at a higher level. I mean, I, th I think in terms of the Tesla dimensions, I happen to think that we've been moved, a lot of us, from the first Tesla dimension to the second Tesla dimension. And according to Tesla, each dimension vibrates at a higher level as you go up. Um, but let's just forget all of that, because that's something that I can't uh, prove. You know, it's non-factual, it's non... Uh, it, may, it may be factual, but I can't prove it. Um, but 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 I have one little foothold that I can suggest to us all as a um, as a reason to think that this is a higher dimension, um, and that is, and this might sound um, silly, and it might sound um, whatever it might sound silly, but but consider the new anatomy the anatomy on this planet, wherein, if you look at, just Google um, human anatomy torso, well, one of the features of the new anatomy with the new rib cage is that more of our vital organs are protected by or contained within the rib cage. Well, that seems to me like an improvement. <laughs> You know, even the brain changes that are, to me, the most exciting thing. The idea that uh, 
you know, the scary idea that we have a, a smaller prefrontal cortex, this part of us that makes us smart is smaller, but that the part of us that's switching information back and forth between the lobes of our brain is bigger and presumably is moving more information back and forth between the lobes of the brain. To me, that's uh, the most exciting uh, thing I can think of about this whole Mandela effect. But I can't prove that it means that we're in a higher consciousness or that we're in a better state. I think it means that. I think it probably will mean that, but I can't prove that. But I think it's pretty incontrovertible to say that it's of a higher level or that it's an improvement to have more of your vital organs contained within and protected by your rib cage, which is the case in this dimension or on this planet um, compared to where a lot of us came from. So, you know, just the fact, let's say that the only other things to ever come out of the Mandela effect are Suzanne Summers' name being spelled differently. You know, is that better, worse, whatever? I mean, it's just kind of interesting. It may not be better, worse, whatever. Even South America being in a different place. Is that better, worse, interesting, spooky? You know, maybe it's spooky and interesting. Maybe it's not better. Maybe it is better. I don't know. But the fact that we are less prone to injuries to some of our vital organs, which used to be outside of the rib cage, which are now in, is to me a perhaps seemingly silly, but to me an incontrovertible, incontro uncontroversial, factual uh, way in which this is a higher universe, <laughs> you know, and and that's all I can say to the, to the scientifically minded. And then I'll say to everyone else, maybe that's a clue that there are other ways, like the brain or other ways in which this is a higher energy universe. But, uh, but even if it's not, even if everything else we ever find out about the Mandela effect is just the Volkswagen logo changing, here's one little thing the rib cage containing more of our vital organs that is better. It's an improvement and it's an indication that we are in a sense in a higher level or a higher energy or a just slightly improved <laughs> universe and body.